My name is Tom Delora, and today we're going to be talking about some fun features uh, that live inside of your SolidWorks that you may or may not know even existed for you. So, we're starting off with uh, what exactly fun features I'm talking about here. And our agenda is coming straight out of SolidWorks today. So the tab I'm looking at is Insert Features. And we're going to go right down the list, uh, avoiding some of the basic ones that I'm assuming you do use in every day. Uh, your fillet, your chamfer, uh, your whole wizard, and then move and copy and delete body we talked about in a previous Lunch and Learn with uh, direct editing. So today's focus is going to be on some of these basic and some of these more advanced features. Uh, from draft all the way down to the split command. We'll be going into some detail on how to use these and when to use these inside of SolidWorks. And I'm going to jump right into some basics. Um, as always, if you have any questions, just type them into the questions box or the chat window, and I'll try to get to them during the, uh, during the Watch and Learn today, or I'll contact you afterwards with an email. All right, so some basic ones. Uh, First, we'll look at the draft command, which is going to taper a face uh, used mostly for molds. So it's giving a degree of draft will allow a mold to uh, easily or uh, a part to be easily removed from a mold. Next one we'll look at is the rib function, or rib feature, which provides support inside of products. So if you shell out a product and it's just a surface body, or if it's a really thin wall. You might want to throw some support in there. We'll show you a real quick way to make a rib without going through all the hassle of doing extrusion or making a new plane. Now the last one for this basic section is uh, the scale function or scale feature, which will scale geometry from your model. It won't backtrack and scale your sketch or any other dimensions, but it will scale your geometry to give the look and feel that you're going for. So if you created something um, in the wrong the wrong measurement or the wrong unit and needed to scale it down by some kind of factor, we'll show you an easy way to do that. So for these first three, I'm going to jump into SolidWorks. And I'm just going to start with a pretty simple block preset template here. So launch that up. I got a 5x5 five five block. The first one I'm going to look at is draft. And you'll notice for this for this lunch and learn I added a new tab with some customization. It pretty much has our agenda up here. So I'm going to go right in order. I'm going to go draft to rib to scale. For draft first, I'm just going to put a quick circle on top of this so we can get our part that we want to uh, create a mold for. So exit this, extrude it, just drag it up. Real basic. So when I'm looking at this part that I want to create a mold for, I want to make sure that it's going to come out of the mold correctly. And I can do a quick analysis on this if I go to my Evaluate tab and Draft Analysis. The only parameter it's going to look for is which way is this getting pulled out of your mold. So this one, I want this, oh, I did it backwards, pulled away from your mold. So for this one, this bottom surface is going to be in my mold. This top surface is going to get pulled out. So based on my commands here on the left, we can see what some of this coloring means. So my green getting the bottom of the mold has a positive draft, which is good. Our yellow is going to require some draft, so that means it's uh, completely parallel with the mold, um, and it's going to be tougher to pull out. And finally, our negative draft, which we expect, because that's going to be the top of the mold coming out. So that one we're okay with. But what we do need to do is add some draft to this to get all our sides green. I'm going to keep my draft analysis on. It will keep my colors and give me a key down in the lower right. So this, I'm going to come into my Fun Features tab and hit the Draft command. What we're looking to do here is add some draft on all these faces. So I'm going to start with my uh, cylinder here. I'm just going to pick a neutral plane that I'm going to draft against. I'm going to select the face that I want to add draft to hit my green check mark. So I did a draft of three. Uh, for this case, it did an outward draft, but it still gets to the desired effect here of what I'm trying to give positive draft everywhere on my part. I'm going to do the same for my block. Again, I'm using my draft tool. 
selected my neutral plane, and then selected the faces that I want to add draft to. So I select those four, four faces of my draft, keep my angle at three, again hit my green check. Now I have a part that can be molded or used for a mold with adequate draft all on all edges. So when it comes time to extract it from the mold, we're going to have no issues. So pretty basic. Um, a couple extra steps in order to get the draft. Now I'm going to show you a real quick and easy way to add draft built right into your extrude. So I'm just going to use my freeze bar, hide those drafts, come back into my extrusion. You'll notice every time your boss extrude uh, feature manager pops up, you do have the draft symbol. And we can turn that on at three degrees of draft and even get a preview when we're in this window. The only difference is because I did a mid-plane extrusion, I'm going to get draft coming on both sides. Whereas when I was in the draft tool, I actually could select a face to pull my draft from. So when I go ahead and select that, I chose the wrong face, but same thing. You'll notice that now I'm having a lot more negative draft in areas that were unexpected, where I had a lot more control when I was doing it from my draft tool. So let me just undo that. For my boss extrude, I'll do the same. I'll use the draft tool. I'll give it a through, not 16 degrees, so three degree draft. Hit OK to make sure that, yep, that's in fact OK. All right. Well, that's what we have for draft. I'm going to move on to our rib section now. So again, I'm just going to create a new block here. So for the rib, I'm going to say I have a part that got shelled out. So it's just some walls. Try to thicken this down. So I have a thin walled part. When I start looking at this, I realize maybe if I have any impact on the sides, it's not going to withstand the force. I'm going to want to add some support into this. So the way our draft tool or our rib tool works, is I come back into my tab, select rib, and the first thing it's going to ask us for is a plane that you want to draw the rib on. So for this case, I want my front plane, which is actually in the middle of my part. So every this block was made using mid-plane extrusions. So now I'm working from a plane in the middle of my part. And all I'm going to do is a quick sketch here, not really connecting any of my endpoints to anything else, just keeping it simple. And that's going to be enough to make my rib. So when I come to exit my sketch, I'll get the option for a midplane or an inside or an outside. I get to pick the width of that rib. So we'll drop it down to a quarter inch. And now I want to point my arrow towards the material, so towards my wall and base. First one, I have my draft turned off. It's going to hit OK. Just like that, I get the support structure internal to this empty box that I had before without needing to set up any parameters or any end conditions for that. It's just going to run using this line to the wherever it hits the next material and create the rib that way. If I do need it to come up to this endpoint, I can create a new rib here using this front face. It's still it's going to throw me right into sketch. So if I had a face selected and hit rib, it's going to throw me right into a sketch. For this one, I'm going to draw a line from the top edge to the bottom edge. Exit my sketch. I'm back into my rib command. Now for this one, I don't want to use a midplane because I don't have any uh, material to put my rib to, and that's going to throw out an error. So for this one, I want to go inside the line. And I want to flip my material down. So I want to go into my box here. This one I am going to add some draft to. So we'll just put five degrees of draft on my quarter inch rib here. And draft inward. So now when I hit OK, we'll see that another rib was created. But because I had draft turned on, it doesn't make it all the way down to my floor or my sidewall here. And as we can see, based on the angle here, that our draft is working and it comes right up to a point and that's where it, that's where it cuts off. So if I wanted to turn this draft off and redraw it, 
we'll see that, yep, in fact, it does go all the way down to the bottom, closes this box up, and keeps a single solid body. So a quick way to make a support structure, uh, all it requires is a simple sketch that is bound inside the lines, and from there we're good to go. All right, the third thing from my PowerPoint is talking about some scaling. So in order to scale some geometry, so I have this box. I took it from a block that was 5 by 5, so it's a 5-inch block. I get a call from a customer that it's too small. They really need this to be a 10-inch block. So, all right, I can redraw it. I can go back, redraw my ribs, but because I didn't really use any uh, diameter or any dimensions to draw this, it might be a little screwed up if I just come in and edit my sketch. So what I can do is use my scale function. And for this one, I'm going to do it about the origin because it's a perfectly symmetrical part. And I'm going to do uniform scaling first. Select a uniform scale of 2, so my 5s become 10. Hit my green check. Now when I go and check my measurement again, and I'm looking down in my lower right here where it says length, I can also use my measure tool to do this. So edge 1 is 10 inches. So I effectively just doubled the size of my box without doing much to my dimensioning. Like I was saying earlier, if I come back to my sketch, it's still going to remain 5 by 5. So this is, in fact, a separate feature that does the scaling. If I wanted to freeze it out, I'd go right back down to 5. What we can also do with this scale, I'm just going to edit the feature I had, is do non-uniform scaling. So say they your customer enjoys the height of the box, just needs to be a little bit longer. What we can do is increase the y-axis of this, oops, wrong axis, the x-axis of this, about the origin. Hit OK. And now what we have is a box with length of 20 and a height of 10, because I still had that at 2. So if I wanted to keep my height at 5, i do a scaling of 1, a z of 1, and a little triple length here. So now I have a height of 5, a length of 15, and I still have a depth of 5. So you have the ability to pick and choose which settings uh, or which axes you want to stretch or scale this based on. Uh, this looks good in a box. What's a more fun example here? Let me just draw a quick sphere. Back, connect it up. All right, and a revolve base around this one. All right, so now I have this sphere. It's out away from my origin, which is the middle of this box. What I can do is come back to my features tab and do scale. So now when I choose this body, if I scale around the centroid and I don't do uniform scaling, I'll have the ability to pretty much make an egg shape. Let's get this one, this one two, and this one one. So now I'm stretching and pulling to make an ellipse out of this versus trying to figure out that geometry and the height and then draw it and then revolve it. All I have to do is make a circle and then rescale it to the geometry I need. So kind of a quick and dirty way to do some of the more difficult geometry parts. straightforward. It's, all these features are living inside your insert tab, features, and we just went down the list from draft, rib, and scale. Uh, I showed shell, but that's a pretty common command. All right. So, no questions on those first three. You must be pros at that. Good to know. All right. Going down some more basics. So these ones get a little bit more complicated. We'll talk about the wrap command, intersect, and then split. So a wrap is a feature that can take a sketch uh, from a, a planar face, so from any plane, and convert it to a non-planar face. So it's 
cylindrical, a conical, um, or an extruded model. So you have offset planes. So that, that one becomes pretty powerful, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, the intersect command we'll use in two ways today. So you can use it as a cutting tool. So if you have a plane that intersects a solid body, you can cut the plane, or you can cut the solid body using the plane. But it also become, comes in handy if you're a mold maker. So if a customer sends you a part and you need to make a mold around it, there's a real quick way to do that using the intersect tool. And then finally, we'll use the split command to uh, separate a single body into a multi-body uh, with a couple clicks of the clicks of the mouse. So we'll do that real quick. All right, jumping back in. So now I want to open up a new part. For this one, I'm going to use a cylinder. So I have a pretty basic cylinder here. And I want to put a logo around my cylinder. But if I click on this face and try to sketch, I don't have that command available to me. I can't set sketch on a cylindrical plane. So what I normally have to do is create a new reference plane. So we'll offset it from the front. Yeah, six inches look good. And now I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. Draw a line, and I'm going to put text on it using this line. So, okay, dimensions. I'll flip it around and put it the right way. Uh, increase the font a little bit here. Quarter inch. We can go a little bit bigger. Too big. All right, 0.4 should be the winner. There we go. So now we have some text that we want to put onto this block. If anyone's tried to do this before, so say I want to cut away from this block, I'll do my extrude cut using using my sketch, so using my letters, and going the right way. So I'm going to say offset from the surface, this being my surface. I just want to make sure, nope, I'm not cutting in, so I'm going to reverse the offset. So I'm cutting into my block. Now when I hit my green check, it looks okay from the front, but as I look around the side, I realize that my C is a little stretched out. So it's not taking into account that I have a rounded face. It's just cutting square. So if I look square onto this, it's cutting straight into the block. Actually, if I increase my letters just a little bit, we can see this see this effect a little bit more. Let me edit my sketch. Increase my font. We'll just make our line a little bit bigger so we can get all our letters in there. There we go. So now when I exit this out, you start to notice how our C is getting stretched. So it's not really ideal for what we're trying to do. Another path we can go down, and just delete that out and save my sketch, is we can use the wrap tool. So what wrap does, coming back into my features, what wrap looks for is a sketch. So I'll choose, oops, choose the plane, not the sketch. So I'll choose my sketch, use wrap. And now what it's looking for is a, a face. So let me select, oh, resource sketch. Select the sketch, select the face. There we go. And what it will do is bend our sketch around the geometry and give us a couple parameters that we can choose now. So one of them is to emboss. So we can extrude from the surface. For this one I'll do 0.25 or 0.2. Now what we get are letters coming perpendicular to the surface versus perpendicular to our plane. It actually wraps right around our cylinder. What we can also do with this wrap feature is deboss or cut extrude. And again, where we had our elongated C before because it was cutting across from the plane, not into our cylinder, we now have a letter that's cut square to it versus square to our plane. It's a pretty nice look there. 
also do a scribe. So what scribe is pretty much like is a split line function. So when you do a split line from a plane, again, you still get the elongated C, but you do have the ability to select new faces. So if I wanted to apply a material to this wrap, I can now select each letter inside this. Same as I do my extrude or my emboss. So now I have a separate entity inside a solid body using that feature. So that one's pretty powerful, especially if you're working with uh, nonlinear planes. I'm just going to hide my plane there. All right. Actually, real quick. All right. The next feature, so we did wrap. Now we're going to look at intersect. And we're going to show this in two ways. So the first one I'm going to do is create a new surface. So just a simple extruded surface. I'm going to make it a spline. So we'll add a, a little bit of complexity to it. Bend it around. All right. That looks good. Extra sketch. And then we'll make sure our surface is actually going to intersect our body. That looks good. So I'm looking to remove the corner here. So I select that. I'll look at my feature manager. In fact, I have one sol or surface body, one solid body. That's ideal. And now coming back to my features, I'm going to do intersect. So what intersect looks for is the selection of a surface, a body, or a plane. For this example, I'm going to select my cylinder body and the plane we just created. Click intersect. And what it will calculate are any regions that get uh, cut from those two. So I have my main cylinder block down here, which is region two, and I also have this little chip out of the corner, which is region one. And what I'm selecting in this area is the regions to exclude. So I want to keep my CAD dimensions block. I do want to remove my upper corner. So I'm going to deselect region two. I want to merge the result, and I want to consume the surface. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I get that difficult geometry from the, from the surface removed out of my solid. If I came back in here, I could have kept my solid, or I could have kept my surface if I didn't uh, click Consume and hit OK. And that would have kept them together. This one looks a little bit cleaner, and that looks good. So if you're looking to cut a complicated shape, and all you have is a surface, or it's easier to manipulate a surface, this intersect command could, could make it pretty easy on you. Because then all you're doing is cutting your body and choosing which side you want to keep. A different use for this intersect, and kind of a more powerful use, is say you get a customer that sends you a part, and it's not a SOLIDWORKS model. So they send you a step file. I'm just going to open up a step file real quick. All right, run import. All right, no, no faulty geometry. This looks good. I'll accept it. Don't want feature recognition. So now I'm looking at this part, and I need to make a mold for it. And I really have no idea how it was built or how to go after making a mold. I can use that intersect tool to actually build the mold around this part. So I'm going to create a new sketch on my top plane. I'm just going to create a mold to the dimensions that I know my machine can handle. So we'll get this centered up. Select the mid plane, select my origin, make them coincident. Turn that into construction and throw a couple dimensions on here. So 70 millimeters, 70 millimeters, we'll have a square mold. Now I want to do an extrusion for this mold. And I want to do mid-plane so I cover up the entire body of the part. Now the important feature that I usually forget is you don't want to merge your result. I'll turn this on to 50 millimeters. And now I'm going to turn off merge. So I want two solid bodies that live inside one another. Once I accept that, we pretty much lose our part that we want to create the mold for. It's buried inside of there. 
again, using our intersect tool, we'll select our, our mold body. But I also want to select the body that we're intersecting with, so our actual part. So select that, do intersect. And now I do get two regions. My first region is the block, which I definitely want to keep. My second one is my part, which I want to get rid of. So I'm pretty much subtracting that part from my mold. I'll hit OK. All I'm left with is my block. Say that nah, didn't really work great. But if I do a cross-section view, well, notice now I now have a cavity where my mold is going to become. Only problem with this mold is I don't have an injection point or a way to uh, remove the mold once it's done or remove the part once it's done. So I want to be able to split this right in half so I have two parts that I can uh, create and then use for a mold. Quickest way to do this is the split command, which all it's going to look for is a surface or a plane to cut your part on. So for this, I'm going to cut right up the middle. I'm going to use the top plane as my tool, and I'm going to cut the part. For this feature, you do have to save your part up front. So this we'll call our caster mold. And now when I come to split, again, I'm going to pick my top plane, cut the part, and I'll split it right in two. So now I have mold top, and down here will be mold bottom, and that looks good. I'll hit my green check, and what I'll do is go off and create two new parts for me, which is in fact my mold top. I'm going to shrink this down. I should also have a mold bottom and a mold bottom. So all I was given was a step file, and what I was able to do is create a two-part mold for that part without really knowing any of the features or geometry behind it. But it is going to create that part pretty much perfectly because it was built right around it. Uh, one other way we can use split is using a face. So I showed you how to use um, showed you how to use a plane or surface. We can also split using just a face. So if I want to take this top face and cut my part, I can now separate my cylinder from my block. Similarly, I can do this by using just a sketch line. So if I do split, I've got to draw my sketch first. So if I have a sketch, and it's just a line, and I want to cut this block at a weird angle, like so that. I can again use split using my sketch three, and I can cut the part. So this time I have my bottom at the angle and also the top of the whole body. So three different ways to do it, using a sketch, using a face, or using a uh, planar surface. Very good. All right. So those were those three. All right. Now we're going to come into some of the more fun tools. So now we'll look at dome, freeform design, and deform. So dome can be applied to any any surface, uh, and it can even if it's a round surface, we can play with ellipses. Uh, for freeform, it's the ability to push and pull your surface to create a more non-conformed uh, geometry, I guess. So it gives you the ability to just drag to get a shape that you desire, not necessarily anything that's dimensioned. Um, deform is using a tool to push and pull at your at your surf or at your solid body. Uh, some set some set shapes that help you get some new new features built right in, but without needing to design a tool first. So dome freeform and deform are our next ones. Using the same part, I'm just going to turn off my draft analysis. I'm going to delete this sketch. All right. So for a dome, I'm saying we can do this two different ways. We can either do it on top of a circle or on top of a square or any other geometry. Back to my fun features. I'm going to click dome. And all it's going to look for is the face. So this one I want to start with the circle. Next option, it's 
asking for is a height. So it'll start with the diameter of your, of your circle and try to create a sphere. But as I increase, it's going to just select a chord length for the diameter of your circle. So this is always staying true, but your overall diameter can keep growing and growing. So a quick way to add spherical geometry on top of a circle kind of looks like a golf tee. We can also edit this because we're on a circle uh, plane or circle face. We can do an elliptical dome, which will stay in the cross section. So this will always be your diameter, but it'll grow up into a half ellipse. So as I shrink this down, or go up, create a quick uh, lipstick tube, hit OK. So a couple quick features that you're not sketching for. It's an actual feature based on geometry that you can jump between a, a dome or an elliptical dome. Bring this guy back down a little bit. We'll do two. That looks good. What we can also do is a dome on a square. So I select my bottom face here, and now I do dome. And what it'll create your dome based on your diameter that you're selecting here, but it'll always smooth out to the corners. So you're creating more of a hill versus a dome. What you also notice is you lose the ability to select an elliptical dome here. So all you can do is a gradual dome. Another fun feature is the ability to switch direction. So right now I'm adding material. I'll hit OK. You can see that, yep, added this dome to the bottom. Say I want to remove material. So I'm trying to save, save material, and this is going to be an excess inside. I can flip the direction of my dome. You can see a slight preview in there. And when I hit OK, well now notice that I have an indent an inch deep. So a quick way to remove material without trying to figure out this sketch, because this is not a normal shape here. It's a kind of parabolic going up and around. Same with our dome up top. If we wanted to reverse his direction, shrink it down just a little bit. Make sure we'll make it elliptical. There we go. And again, now you have a, a pre-built cavity going an inch and a half deep. We're just trying to do a cut extrude there using the side profile. All right, what do we got next? Free form. So this one is fun. I'm going to open up a new, new block part. Hit OK. What free form gives you the ability to do is pull on a surface. So select free form. It's going to ask for a face. So I select this face. Now I can add some curves to it. So they're called control curves. And these are the segments that we're going to pull on. So select one there, there, there. Hitting the tab key will turn the orientation of our control curves. We'll do that. Hit escape to get out of it. And now when I select the control curve, I get these points that are at all my central meeting points. With that selected, I can start dragging and getting some uh, funky geometry just by grabbing control points. What you can start to see is because I don't really know which way I'm dragging because I'm not square to any face, you can make some uh, interesting design choices. A better way to go about this is to use a control sketch. So I'll accept my craziness there. And I'll just do a new I'll do a new sketch on the top plane. So now what I want to do is create a spline from corner to corner. And we'll give it some bends, some some funkiness. And now when I select my curve design or my control curves, go back into oops, next to my sketch. Freeform. 
So now, when I'm selecting my control curves, I want to select them at the high and low points of this sketch. So I'm on this face, let's add some curves. So I hit a peak there, a valley here, another peak here. What I also want is a control curve to run right through this path that I just created. It's right in the middle of my, my uh, face. Choosing this now, I want to go square to my front face. What this allows me to do is it prohibits any movement forwards and backwards. Now when I select my point and drag it up, I know that I'm only moving in XY space. I'm not going backwards in Z. Pick this, drag this point up. There's some playing with it to get it just right. But this is really just a guide curve, so we're trying to get it close. There, slide this up, bring it back a little. So we're pretty close there. Now when I hit OK, I kept all my geometry central. So this was the shape I was going for, and it slowly slopes back down. Whereas this side, as I was dragging, I could move in all three axes, and I ended up with a point way out here which was intended to stay central to the part. So that control curve does give you a lot more, or control sketch gives you the ability to keep your design somewhat contained while using freeform, because it can get out of hand rather quickly uh, with one accidental drag. All right, next, the deform tool. Again, just using a block. Deform is similar to freeform, except it gives you a set shape. So instead of you, you're still picking and choosing how far you want to push or pull, but you're using a shape option. So for this, I'm going to use a point, and select this face, and right away you can start to see our preview. So some of the selections that we have for this deform, deform point are how, how far do we want to come out? Do we want to come out five inches? Do we want to come out one inch and just kind of make a bump? Start with one, and then our region, so the area of this deformation. We can go pretty small and just make a point. We can go pretty wide and take up our whole surface for that extrusion. Uh, and we can also shoot, choose the shape. So do we want a minimum stiffness, a medium stiffness, or a maximum stiffness? I'll do maximum for this one. Hit OK. What you'll see is that it looks like a tool came into the middle of this box and pushed out. Conversely, we can flip that right around and pretty much make a dent inside our block. So now our tool is coming from the outside pushing in. So it's just a quick feature to your geometry. We're not touching any sketches. All we're quantifying is the depth of the push and the area of the push also determine the stiffness of so we want just a point here and we'll shrink it down to one. Now we can see this cavity being formed internal. So again, a quick feature um, that doesn't require much effort on the design part, but it is powerful if this is something that you're working on constantly, but want that rough finish. Uh, we can also lock down some sides that will adjust the deformation of it. Let's go back to wide. So freezing this side forced to push up. So now our tool was large. It affected our top surface and our side surface, but it held this surface true. Cool. All right. So the dome can be used for ellipses. And it can add material or take away material. Freeform, always e easier to use a design sketch to try to keep you true to what your, tr what your end goal is. And then the deform is, gives you the ability to alter shapes of complex surfaces or solid models. All right, our last advanced here 
they have an indent tool and a flex tool. So the indent feature is pretty similar to our uh, intersect tool, except it gives us the option now to create a pocket or an offset. So we'll play with that um, in a second, and then the flex tool will end on. So flex tool has four different features built inside of it, and uh, it's just a fun one to play with. Uh, I've, I can't really give a solid example, but I'll, I'll play with it and show you what it's capable of, and maybe you guys can get back to me on how you're using it in the industry. All right, starting first with indent. So I'm going to shrink this down and go back to my uh, CAD dimensions part here. So get rid of our intersect, which we saw the effect of the intersect. And we'll go back to our surface and our solid body. Now using the indent command, it's a little bit different than the intersect that it's looking for a target body and then a tool body. In this case, we want our target body to be the CAD dimension cylinder. Our tool is again going to be the surface. But what we can do is provide an offset. We want to keep the selections. We want to cut them. And what we're looking at is the offset of that cut. So if I want to bring this down to point 0.1, you can see that it's going to offset from that surface going in this direction. I can always change that around. Oh, maybe my angle is too small there. There we go. So we can also offset this way. So we have two parts that we want to fit together, and we have to cut away from one. You don't want that tolerance to be zero. You might want that tolerance to have a slight offset. I selected the wrong body. We do want to cut. We want to flip the direction of the cut. So now you can see that we have that offset from our tool. And if we have pieces trying to fit together, we can add our tolerance right into that feature. What we can also do with the indent tool is use a surface as a target body and a region as the tool. Let's delete this out and delete this out. And now our target body is going to be a surface. Tool body is going to be our solid. So now what we're telling SolidWorks to do is create a surface model based on these two geometries. This one I don't want to cut. I want to remove a selection. All right. For this one I'm going to remove my solid body. Solid which thinks. And effectively what I'm doing hopefully, is creating a surface in the geometry of my solid. Could be my offset here. Yeah, I'll just turn off my offset. Cut it away. There we go. And I just have to hide. So now what we're doing is using our setup body, so our indented body as a surface, and our tool becomes our block. So I'm cutting away that shape from my surface. So I come back here and edit it and say I want to keep the selections now. Hit OK. Now what I'm doing is creating a surface body out of my entire solid. So now I still have a solid body, which is my CAD Dimensions logo here, but my surface body is this entire unit. So they've merged together and I've created a little lip um, into this cylinder. So a different take on the intersect tool. It allows you to convert into a solid or into a surface. And it also allows you to pick and choose what you want to save with an offset. All right. Last part now. 
generic part. And we'll do a quick sketch on the front plane. So our last feature is the flex. So I'm just going to make just a big rectangle, throw a couple dimensions on it. There we go. And give it an extrusion. All right. So all we're starting out with is a block stick, simple geometry. What I can do with my flex tool is bend this geometry, twist it, taper it, or stretch it. So all four of these options are now living inside a single feature. First going to start, I'm going to try to make a drill bit. So a drill bit is twisted metal with a tapered edge. Um, and then we'll stretch it just to get it the right height. So starting first, we're going to twist this geometry. SolidWorks will pick a trim plane. So it'll pick a top and a bottom for you. And then you can create offsets to that top and bottom. But really all it's looking for is an angle or a degree to start twisting. So I'm going to increment up to 15 degrees. You can start to see what's happening with our model. So we're starting to build a helix design just by continually twisting this in place. So right there looks pretty good. I like that look. I'll hit OK. And now instead of doing uh, trying to create a helix or trying to create a coil, all I did was create a simple block and twist it about 420 degrees. So that looks, it's looking like the start of my drill bit. I'll come back up to the front face. Next flex I want to do, or next flex command I want to do, is taper that down. So tapering, same body. So now what my degree is, so instead of a twisting degree, we're trying to figure out a, an angle that I'm going to cut away from. So now, I'm getting a focused body down low and a little bit of a wider body up top. That looks good. I'll hit OK. So now my drill bit is looking pretty tapered down to a point. So it's going to be easy entrance in and then get wider as we power through the board. So the last thing, now I'm looking at this and I'm realizing it's really not long enough for what I need it to be. So I do a quick measure. We're only at three inches in the Y. So I want to increase the length of this. And I can use my scale. Scale would work here. But flexing would keep my geometry. So if I do stretch, again, select my body. So now I'm looking for a distance. And now I'm just pulling at that body. That looks good. Now, clockwise. So now as we start drilling, we can see that it's the correct length, it's the correct taper, and it's the co correct uh, helix that we're looking for. And all this came from was a dumb block. So this flex command is very powerful uh, if you have a method for it. The last one inside the feature was bending. So bending again is going to look for an angle. And as we turn it, it'll bend itself around to one side. So we'll see the side profile there. 105 degrees. Let's shrink that down a little bit. So 75 degree bend. Now we can adjust the distance between our two trim planes, but that's really just being controlled by our angle. So we'll say OK there. And now our bend kind of leaves us with a, uh, a tornado looking drill bit that would not work in the real world, but it does look really cool. So that right there is the flex command. And that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to show you today in our insert features. And these are our special features that we went through today. So coming back through. Uh, we do have some upcoming webinars and morning shows. Uh, all our training events and uh, marketing events can be found on the CAD Dimensions website.
Uh, next week, we have a break to educate on SolidWorks inspection. So we have a new series coming out on some new products. Uh, SolidWorks inspection will be our first one here. Uh, if you're a current user of SolidWorks inspection, there'll be helpful hints and tricks or tips and tricks. If you're looking for an inspection tool, it'll be a good overview of what the tool offers and some uh, some features that come with it. We also have our morning show next Friday, which Kevin and Franco will be presenting on Mechanical Conceptual, which has just been released, a uh, brand new product that has a, uh, a lot of power behind it. So tune in next Friday. And as always, in case you missed anything, you can always use our website, uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, those posts are constantly getting published to social media. And uh, our blog is still being populated pretty much twice a week at this point with new articles, uh, some helpful hints for you. So feel free to click there. Uh, that's all I got today, guys. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions. Can you wrap text on a surface and then flex it? All right, let's try that one out. We had a question coming in from Russell. Let me, <laughs> as I have all these parts in here, let me see if I can find the right one. All right, so generic part here with some text on it. Now we want to use the flex command. We'll twist up this body. As we twist it, we'll hit OK. Some processing time. But it does, based on the preview, Russell, I believe we'll be able to get that twisted text like you're asking. So the answer is yes. Any other questions? All right, great. Thanks a lot, guys. You have a good day.